So there's this this item that's that's um, <clears throat> pertinent. It's it's matter. It matters a lot because dropping your acting baggage is a topic that. Well, let's say this way. A lot of times, this surprises actors, and they think, "Oh my goodness, how did this happen? They never thought that they could have such a thing happen." Look, baggage in acting. What is acting bag? Acting baggage is actually when you have done whatever kind of emotional work that you've done and you have leftover remnants of emotion from your acting exercise experience. So all of a sudden something in your acting world or your imaginary world or imaginary circumstance, it literally has activated something in you and you still have this baggage left over. Maybe you have a memory that came to you during the, the, the um, acting exercise, just a flash happened. All of a sudden, you know, you just felt the, some wave of energy come over you and you're in the middle of the acting exercise and you know, somebody's yelling at you or somebody's in an argument or there's something nice happening and all of a sudden there's just something that's triggered. And it's just, and this thing is triggered in you, right? And you go and you do the acting exercise and you're working back and forth and there's interaction happening. And then the acting exercise ends. And then you just feel like there's this thing, there's this weight that's left over. This is called acting baggage. It is the absolute normal, normal thing to go through when you're actually working with emotions and acting. See, a lot of times people do this work and they're only working with instincts and feelings. They're working at very superficial levels and that's great because maybe that's exactly what they need for something that they're working on. It's very possible. And the reality to this also is a lot of times they'll be working with their feelings or they'll be working with maybe even deep feelings and then something in their work will trigger an emotional response in them and they they'll have this thing called acting baggage. So even when they're working kind of light within the acting exercises or they're working on this scene and all of a sudden they've done the scene and then something about, you know, nine or eight times somebody does a scene, sometimes things will just trigger. Something will trigger off, there'll be an emotional trigger and all of a sudden there'll be this stuff that just people won't be able to shake. They won't be able to shake it immediately off. There are these programs that I use, and I use these programs to do these things like cartoons, to be able to accentuate, to, to, ex, to absolutely um, amplify the emotions that I go through. And when I go through emotions, first of all, I absolutely emotionally prepare, sometimes even before the videos, because I, I love emotional preparation. I love to be able to get myself upset about one thing, get myself upset about another, and then put that into some imaginary work. And these cartoons, there's links in the descriptions below, and they can absolutely, they can amplify those expressions that you can learn to be able to get with your talent. Okay, so feel free, use those links. Things will just trigger. Something will trigger off, there'll be an emotional trigger, and all of a sudden, there'll be this stuff that just people won't be able to shake. They won't be able to shake it immediately off after they've done their acting. And this is absolutely something that is healthy to talk about. This is a normal process. Listen, singers go through the same. Singers will go through the same thing where they'll have a, a highlighted concert, they'll feel the concert in the room for days afterwards. Sometimes it's a euphoric feeling. Sometimes the, for acting, instead of having this euphoric feeling like a lot of the artists might have, they, they, for uh, singing, they might, you might end up having this like withdrawal for like two or three days. And you'll, you'll not be able to quite put your finger on it. Everything's fine logically, you're going to the same schedule, everything's working right, you've got everything in alignment to, to be able to do everything, all the, everything's lined up, it's all working. But here's what happened, you ended up getting emotional acting baggage. So first of all, realize that this thing is a real thing. It's an absolute thing. This is not made up. It, has, it happens to a lot of people. And it happens to people a lot of times and they'll work through it without them knowing that they've gone through it. Other times, they'll end up being in a situation where they have acting baggage 
and they won't know or they'll know that they have something going on and they're just like they'll they'll make a call to the director and they'll say hey listen man uh, I think that we should change this scene out and change it with another scene and the director said no well, why you know like uh, this rehearsal was going so well with you and uh, Susie or whatever her name is so you you want to do uh, good acting you want to be able to do this why do you want to change the scene they'll be like oh I don't know I don't know and they'll and then some directors will know, oh yeah, this person's got something going on that's triggering them from doing that scene. And then there's a lot of choices that can be made in that whole scenario. Now look, if you work with this whole concept of dropping your acting baggage, you are literally giving yourself the time consistently as part of your technique to check in with yourself to see if you have any emotional baggage from your work. Hi, I'm inviting you to actually join me live on the internet. And uh, if you would, you can bring your own emotional preparation. We can work on emotional preparation together and we can really hone down and help build out that talent with inside of you. Now, even if all it is is you wanna just bring an emotional preparation do a spoon river, I don't mind. Come, join us, and absolutely practice the talent of your own acting. So it, it's, it's vital, because what you can actually do then is you might not realize that when you're working on a scene, like let's say a common, common thing I've seen over the years, somebody will work on a scene, and they'll work on it, and they'll almost get the scene right for the class or the teacher or the, the production. They'll almost get the scene, like a really heavy scene, like in a movie. They'll get the scene maybe within like 10 days, maybe two weeks. And they'll be having to rehearse this scene for like two, two weeks to be able to do it for the camera, right? It happens. So the thing is, is you wanna then, what will happen is they'll, they'll get this thing and they'll start to just almost get the scene. And then this, acting baggage will just hit one or both of the actors and then all of a sudden it, it, it'd be like the scene and sometimes the thing that's said to them in classes or in productions is it looks like they're beating a, a dead horse in their scene work because there's a block that's happening in each of them because what they've done is they've worked that acting um, area within themselves to the point where they're not giving themselves a break from that actual scene material. This is common. It's actually really a lot more common than anybody talks about. And this is the reason why I'm talking about it. Because it's been a concern of mine for, oh gosh, a um, long time actually, quite a few years, a lot of years, uh, at least 10. Where I've really honestly, so I've seen this and I've made comments and notes and some of it's in the notebooks. And it, it's just this thing that is just a fact with acting that you're going to end up having this residual that happens when you're activating emotion it's part of an acting of the actor's plight so work with this in a way that you're understanding that dropping the em emotional acting baggage is actually something that's a healthy normal process because if those same actors that worked and were working on that scene and then almost had it after two weeks and then it became a dead horse if they could have actually started to work with those emotions and then rested those emotions, rested that element that they kept waking up over and over and over themselves for, to be able to use for the scene. If they had rested, what would have actually happened is that they would have started to develop these acting muscles or this strength having to do with those emotions. So it's key. It is absolutely an important topic because you don't want to get stuck in a rut in a way that's putting yourself so that you just keep reactivating, 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 you know, either the same emotion with uh, the same stimulus often can get that result. Actually, I could, uh, yeah, uh, that's one thing that's definite. 
um, is, is a mistake I've seen people do is that they'll use only the exact same single emotional preparation and then they get caught in that, in that, in that element of the acting baggage. And the other thing is that just sometimes they're using a, a few, several different uh, emotions in that same range and then they're able to kind of get stuck. So take note of this. Understand that this is an actual thing to be able to consider. Uh, boop the like button if you would. Um, stick around to, to um, you know, basically, I'm doing this because I really like acting. I have a lot of acting experience, and I really would like to build up a whole essence of being able to explain stuff that sometimes is, goes unexplained in acting. And I, I really have a lot of notes on that kind of stuff. So let me know any comments and questions, and that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so I teach people how to get upset. I have a lot of fun teaching people how to literally, purposefully upset themselves. Actually waking their own activations up so that they're emotionally activated. There's something that they can get upset about within a ballpark of emotion. But the key, the absolute key, is I don't want you to carry around that stuff in your life. That's what's called acting baggage. You want to be able to learn a technique. I have to be able to tell you that it's, it would be a disservice for me to teach you all of these incredible techniques on how to access yourself as an artist without reminding you very nicely that you don't need your acting baggage in life. So feel free, work on processes where you have a release time after you're doing your acting. And what this will do is it will actually amplify your work because it will give your acting muscles the break that they need in order to get the rest that they need so that your work will be even stronger.